good morning my seniors my colleagues and uh, everyone present over here uh, today what we are going to talk about is the establishment of regional viral diagnostic and research laboratory in ems jodhpur before going to the uh, exact the uh, whole journey of the development of this lab first i would like to say some words about what's the rationale of developing a virology lab so before uh, before answering this question let's take some questions why do we need to study viruses as we know that ki virus they don't have brain though they have a uh, evolutionary goal they want to uh, spread their genome to as many cell as possible and during the course of its uh, spreading their genome they tends to change and this change is attributed to the mutations occurring in their genome and due to this mutation again uh, again and again the new variants comes into an picture and this change is uh, <coughs> very dangerous for the uh, uh, health point of view because once a new strain comes into the population the already immunized population they also comes at risk the already non immunized population they also comes at risk so detecting a new variant is, uh, is very important as uh, uh, as soon as we will be uh, detecting the new variant we can predict the possible new peak what we are seeing in this ongoing pandemic <coughs> secondly are the viruses study in response to an outbreak or in preparation the answer is both sometimes a new spontaneously a new virus comes into an picture again the good example is the ongoing pandemic we were not at all ready for the, this new uh, uh, corona viruses the viruses once emerged in a small cluster in a particular restricted geographical location and they spread to and uh, it uh, uh, spread to the whole world and it's and uh, now it's a global pandemic <coughs> so, so we need to study about the new emergence of new viruses so that we can prepare ourselves for the new peak or the uh, so called the new outbreak secondly uh, sometimes a known viruses the viruses we already know this sometimes acts nasty they results into reemergence and emergence of new clusters and uh, ultimately leading to the new outbreak so it becomes very important to diagnose such reemerging viral infections so that we can restrict the uh, infection spreading to the new population or new geographical location so we can ultimately prevent the new outbreak the so called outbreak <coughs> and again the detecting the new variants becomes very important because uh, whenever there is a change in the viral genome the, the diagnostic sometimes the diagnostic test fails so we need to design a new diagnostic test sometimes the uh, treatment uh, protocol gets changes because uh, the new variant comes with the new symptoms new presentations and sometimes the new uh, range of hosts so uh, this is also one of the reason why we need a advanced virology lab <coughs> next question is does the virology lab focus on one or just uh, just one type of viruses definitely the answer is no though sometimes we focus a particular viruses whenever a uh, sign and symptoms or the clinical presentation of the patient is pointing towards a particular viruses we Uh, uh, directly go for the testing for the those particular viruses for example in case of uh, transfusion transmitted infection we particularly uh, target all those viruses which get transmitted by the blood uh, which are blood borne while sometimes a syndromic approach is taken whenever a group of viruses they are presenting with a similar presentations what we call the syndromic approach like in respiratory uh, group of viruses presenting with the similar features diarrhea causing group of viruses presenting with the similar features similarly encephalitic group of viruses or the viruses which can lead to immunosuppression but definitely uh, uh, we cannot it's uh, practically impossible to target all the viruses at a particular time by a particular lab so we target our or we restrict ourselves to a particular group of viruses which are either predominant in the current uh, population or the geographical location where the lab is situated they are more uh, pointed towards the viruses which are endemic in that particular geographical location also the population residing over there the population which is susceptible uh, susceptible to a particular group of viruses we are going to Uh, target those group of viruses again seasonal viruses some viruses they comes in a wave in a particular uh, season for example we talk about the dengue or chikungunya viruses they are most commonly uh, uh, the population uh, population most commonly get infected post 
active monsoon season so we are prepared that since the monsoon uh, monsoon season has just ended up so we can get a quite good number of uh, cases of these uh, vector one viruses causing rash fever in uh, in a mass population so definitely we are going to target as many as viruses as possible of uh, human importance but it's practically impossible to target each and every viruses in a uh, by a particular lab <coughs> Now, when we talk about the rationale of viral diagnosis, there are there are many such scenarios where we can uh, say that the uh, uh, virology lab is uh, very important in uh, such scenarios. Firstly, when the viral disease uh, is of public health importance, for example, in case of influenza, RBV viruses. or encephalitic group of viruses uh, where the infectivity is quite high or the fatal outcome is quite uh, early in case of encephalitic group of viruses the infectivity is those not so high but the fatal outcome is very uh, high so so in that cases we need to diagnose the cases we need to start the therapy as soon as possible to restrict uh, such uh, fatal outcome secondly when uh, uh, there is a significant risk of susceptible uh, person as we know that many of the viruses we have a very good uh, uh, vaccines but it's uh, still uh, every population is not protected from those particular group of viruses for against which we have a good uh, preventable vaccine so we need to identify those unprotected population and we need to vaccinate those population again if a case arises in such population we need to restrict uh, the uh, spread of infection by quarantining or by treating the case as soon as possible here also the virology labs has a uh, very good uh, support in providing the uh, proper and uh, <coughs> treatment to the cases next situation involving the important consideration whenever uh, uh, a patient comes to us Uh, uh, every time we are not uh, directly jumping into the diagnosing the cases sometimes we uh, <coughs> advise them some uh, test to rule out some infection for example if a pregnant woman comes to a clinic every gynecologist used to write a set of test to rule out certain condition so that the congenital uh, infection can be detected as early as possible and they can be treated or sometimes if the infection is not treatable then the couple can be advised for the further planning <coughs> similarly in case of encephalitis if a uh, cases is uh, diagnosed as early as possible the uh, prevention and treatment uh, uh, can be started as soon as possible <coughs> next scenario is when uh, uh, there is a situation where a uh, uh, mass of population is suffering from a upper respiratory tract infection or uh, uh, children they are suffering from a upper respiratory tract infection as we know that most of the upper respiratory tract infection they are viral in origin and there we are unnecessarily prescribing the antibiotics so ultimately the injudicious use of antibiotic is there there is risk of uh, emergence of drug uh, resistance bugs and uh, finally there is always a uh, increased financial burden on the healthcare system there also the viral laboratory uh, uh, gives an additional support in diagnosing such non bacterial cause of upper respiratory tract infections <coughs> next scenario is when uh, we need to uh, 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 while diagnosing we need to apply some therapeutic importance for in, uh, for example in case of needle stick injury in a person working in a healthcare setup if a person gets needle stick injury he or she might not be vaccinated against the group of viruses against which we have a good vaccines so we need to test the exposed person as well as the source person so that the proper post exposure prophylaxis can be started on time and as soon as possible because everybody knows that once the uh, proper post exposure prophylaxis is started on time the, uh, uh, the chances of Uh, uh, getting the infection reduces to a significant level also if a person has uh, got a needle prick injury from the hepatitis b positive individual and if the person is not protected suddenly we can start the passive immunization as well as the active immunization at, at the proper time so that the person is protected from the further developing the further infections 
तो ऑल दिस कहते हैं दिस आर द वेरी हैंडफुल ऑफ कंडीशंस वेयर द वायरोलॉजी लैबोरेटरी द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ वायरोलॉजी लैब बिकम्स सो इंपॉर्टेंट एंड फ्रॉम हियर ऑनवर्ड्स आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर रवि शेखर गटी पडेसल टू टेक इट फ्रॉम हियर थैंक यू सो मच thank you dr abhishek uh, for giving the let us letting us know about the rationale for the viral the lab so coming to the establishment of the regional vrdl lab at uh, aims jodhpur there are two components one is a uh, setting up of a containment facility and uh, developing a genomic lab so why a containment lab is needed in india so it is under dhr uh, it has started establishing the containment laboratories Uh, for better diagnostics facilities for detection of emerging diseases and to focus the early diagnosis of and research on emerging re-emerging and newly emerging highly pathogenic infectious diseases so these regional laboratories having a role in combating the endemic diseases outbreaks situations and national emergencies of many and highly infectious zoonotic diseases of public health importance So under uh, DHR, uh, it's a D V V R D L is a network of laboratories of viral research laboratories. They are uh, getting established. So it was planned in 2013 with a um, mass amount of 643 uh, crores of grant, and they thought that they are about to establish 160 viral research laboratories across India, and out of which 10 regional laboratories. And 30 are going to be state level uh, lab laboratories, and 120 are medical lab, medical college level laboratories. So by 31st March 2021, they could establish around 120 VRDLs, out of which 10 regional VRDLs are there. Out of which we have one VR regional VRDL at AIMS Jodhpur, and uh, 25 state level and 89 medical college level VRDLs are there. So by 15th Finance Commission, that is a new one which has again given. Uh, uh, it's assent for uh, one regional level and two state level and 29 medical college level vrdls so coming to the containment facilities so there are four containment facilities most of you all know that uh, according to the microbes means the pathogen which we are handling in the lab they will be divided into four uh, categories they are uh, bsl1 bsl2 and bsl3 and bsl4 in the bsl1 we mainly uh, bsl1 it is in the bent side only we may can manage these pathogens on the bent side only and bsl2 we it is having a moderate risk and they are can cause a mild infections and difficult to contact via aerosol transmission whereas a bsl3 and bsl4 they are actually require the containment facility and they will be handled in a biosafety cabinet so these bsl3 uh, the pathogens are going to be serious and potentially lethal disease through respiratory transmission whereas bsl4 is having the uh, pathogens those pathogens are going to be transmitted and they can be frequently fatal and without they don't have any treatment or vaccine presently available so where these bsl4s are presently available there are two bsl4s which were recognized by the dhr in india that is one is in pune that is national institute of virology in pune another is high security animal disease laboratory in bhopal so these are the two bsl4 and in india we have bsl3 laboratories which were recognized by dhr out of which all indian institute of medical science jodhpur that is ours in jodhpur is the one uh, having the bsl3 which has been completed and uh, nicd kolkata and rmrc dibrugad and rmrc bhuneshwar these are the ones which are validated by dhr and they are all functional also so rest of them they are in uh, either in construction phase or they are in the validation phase so coming to the establishment of bsl3 just i would like to tell you the establishment of bsl3 has started in the uh, way before in 2017 when the project was granted from the dhr so the establishment includes the pre design and design so professor nag has has a major role in designing this uh, bsl3 and uh, we have started this uh, process into uh, by 23rd july uh, 2018 and we have uh, um, made this uh, tender for uh, bsl3 for the con construction of the bsl3 and two uh, companies that is biosafe and clenjet has participated in this uh, process and finally the clenjet got the opportunity to build up the bsl3 at aims jodhpur 
so the construction started in 10th august 2020 you know that it is in the time of the pandemic first wave of the pandemic and uh, he could able to he, even though he has having his own problems and he could able to finish this uh, construction in, a, in the time limit and the validation has been con conducted on 26 june 2021 so the validation has been conducted by the dhr icmr team and they came here and uh, the external committee members have done this validation and it has been conducted on the 25th march 2022 that is in the recent uh, last week we had a meeting with the dhr and uh, i am happy to say that the dhr has announced that they are going to certify our bsl3 so bsl3 if you see this bsl3 is having a double door entry in our uh, here in first floor of medical college of department of microbiology and it is having a cctv uh, camera here so without entering into the labs you can able to see what is happening in the bsl3 so it is uh, th these are all inherent components of the bsl3 so if you can see that uh, there is a shower system is there if the shower system is going to function uh, three cycles 10 seconds apart and uh, before uh, uh, before and after the shower system we have a changing rooms so we have after entering into the uh, coming out of from the changing rooms we will have this uh, common corridor which is going to be connected to the three laboratories one is going to be molecular lab micro molecular biology laboratory another is a serology laboratory and another is a tissue culture laboratory so you can see there is a negative uh, pressure room uh, as we move from here to here so the air flow is always from the corridors into the lab only not vice versa so we have a uh, after completing the work from the lab personnel he has to come out and uh, he has to autoclave all the things whichever he, he has uh, worked in these laboratories and there is a pass box is also there where we can pass the entry of the samples uh, into the bsl3 and out of the bsl3 so what are the applications of the bsl3 so we have in 2021 dhr has given as a cchf project that is crimean congo hemorrhage project in 2017 we have an outbreak of cchf here in uh, uh, jodhpur so they have given a, a, this project for uh, lab diagnosis for the diagnosis of cchf and also for the uh, culturing of the cchf so we have another project that is a surveillance center for the influenza we are a recognized dhr surveillance center for uh, avian influenza which i am going to discuss so we, in that we have a uh, influenza virus cell culture is also there in that project so presently what we are doing in the bsl3 we are doing the covid 19 testing to customize all our technicians and all the personal lab personnel whoever is working in our bsl3 to to enter and to exit to customize them to enter and exit from the bsl3 and we are also doing the wastewater surveillance from a local company so coming to the sars coronavirus 2 testing which we are doing in our bsl3 and also in bsl2 lab we have a sars coronavirus 2 testing by two methods that is molecular and serological method in the molecular method we are doing the real time pcr and also the rob uh, about id now which is a rapid uh, pcr which can test only a single sample for half an hour we can able to tell you the whether it is a pcr positive or not and we have a serological testing which we have done the serum immune, immune uh, serological surveillance by igg antibody uh, a total of 2780 samples were done for this igg and we have a rat test which we are giving it to the both trauma and ipd centers so we have in total we have done 33865 rat tests and around 2 lakhs more than 2 lakhs rt pcr tests and out of which we have 27000 900 samples were positive for real time pcr so uh, professor nag is having a role in, in uh, development of this bsl2 for covid 19 testing and we are also thankful for the administration for procurement timely procurement of this uh, automated machines that is kaijen uh, rna extraction machine and also backman coulter rna extraction system and we are also thankful to the unicef they have given us two uh, real time pcr machines of uh, biorad which are used in sars coronavirus 2 so during the process of uh, development of the sars coronavirus 2 testing lab we have also uh, made a patent for uh, a rapid and also um, uh, cost uh, cost effective rna extraction kit which can be used for covid 19 testing and it is the commercialization is under process 
So coming to the uh, the data which we are here we are going to show that in the first wave that is started in the month of March and uh, December uh, it ended in the month of December in 2020. You can see uh, the maximum number of cases were uh, we, um, samples were received that is 21,348 samples were received during this period in the month of June and July but the actual the positivity is more during the August and September. You can see the positivity is, is much more during the August and September both in AIMS and also from the CMHO. We will get the CMHO samples that is uh, from different PHCs that is Kudi Bagasani and another is uh, Jalamand and another is uh, Madhuban area. So maximum number of tests per day we have conducted during this period is 1100 tests per day. So during the second wave which is uh, Mar March to July we have the maximum number of samples and also the maximum number of positivity was also observed in this during this uh, month April to May April to May and uh, uh, from both these um, from both the things that is from the CMHO as well as from the flu desk of AIMS we have received the maximum number of positivity during the uh, April and May and then the maximum number of RT-PCR tests which you have con conducted per day is 1700 during the second wave. So the recent wave that is the third wave which we have seen in the, in the year 2022 that is from the January to March we have seen uh, all of a sudden increase of the uh, number of cases that is 13,000 cases were uh, uh, observed in, uh, in the month of January and we have also seen the highest positivity in the month of January uh, where from the flu desk and also from the CMHO samples. So coming to the Omicron, the Omicron was detected in our center and uh, we have seen that uh, the total number of samples in the total number of samples that is uh, in the month of January 25,339 samples were positive for uh, COVID out of which uh, Omicron was detected in 806 samples and we have done the OMISHU test and we have some of these samples of these Omicrons have been confirmed by the NIV Pune. So coming to this regional VIDL, as it caters for both Rajasthan and Gujarat, so certain medical colleges to four medical colleges which are under uh, our, uh, our VIDL. In Rajasthan, we have SP Medical College, Bikaneer and RNT Medical College, Udaipur. And in Gujarat, we have MP Shah Medical College, Jamnagar and BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad. So uh, in the process of COVID-19 testing and establishment, uh, DHR has given us an, uh, um, um, a mentorship for this Rajasthan and Gujarat states for uh, development of this COVID-19 laboratories across these two states, that is Rajasthan and Gujarat. And under the leadership of our director, sir, we could able to do 152 Rajasthan medical colleges, private labs, both government and uh, uh, private lab, uh, private medical colleges, we could give for testing for COVID-19. We have gone through their QCs and after uh, seeing their QCs and their establishment, we can give their uh, approval and 203 Gujarat medical colleges and private labs were given for approval. So coming to the wastewater surveillance, uh, we have a local project that is a local company project that is a fluid robotics project uh, where the robot will go into the, these sewage canals and it can collect the samples. So out of this, uh, we have these samples which we have collected from Ames, Basini and also Salawas and Andri area. And uh, we could able to see the positivity in June, which has been done in the month of January to March in this year only. So we can see the positivity of these samples in the uh, for COVID-19 and we have also done detected the Omicron in these, these positive samples. So coming to the genomic lab, the other component which I would like to tell you, the genomic lab is under establishment and uh, we got this MISEC instrument for uh, gene sequencing that is for MGS. And uh, uh, the installation is under process. By the end of this week, we can run the QC uh, for this uh, NGS. So for briefing about this NGS protocol, how we will do? So you all know that is the SARS coronavirus 2 is a RNA virus. The RNA will be converted into cDNA, that is a complementary DNA, that is a genomic DNA. It is getting, uh, it is fragmented and the fragmented DNA will be again ligated because the DNA is a coiled structure. So you need to fragment it and you have to make a ligated DNA and the libraries will be formed. And then these libraries are going to be getting to be amplified to the gene clusters and then they are ready for the sequencing. So they will be analyzed for the sequencing to understand their reference mapping and also for the variant analysis. 
so this is the qc uh, of these libraries will be performed by the tap station which is going to be which has been procured along with this ngs so it can able to detect if any mismatches have been happened during this library formation so uh, the software analysis this is an important component of this NC ngs for the brief understanding just i would like to tell you after having the sequencing we have the, this fluorescent image this is going to be a dotted image which you cannot able to understand what kind of sequence it is then the primary analysis that has to be done with the isec software then we will able to understand the basic base sequence that is in the form of atgc atgc so after having this uh, uh, secondary analysis we could able to find out this alignment and also the variant detection which is going to be done after secondary analysis with the isec software so insacog as you all know this is the insacog which we have discussed earlier this is the indian sars coronavirus 2 genomic consortium uh, which is a interministerial ministerial consortium of 28 laboratories which involves the ministry of health and well, uh, health and family welfare and department of biotechnology csir and also the icmr so it is for the ascertain the status of new sars coronavirus 2 variants so uh, in this uh, insacog only they have detected the alpha beta gamma and delta and also the omicron variants in india it's a, like a, a common platform for all kind of laboratories across india this uh, uh, we will be uh, after running the qc we will be enrolling for this insacog for uh, having a better hospital network clinical correlation for these sequences and also for uh, sequencing the breakthrough infections which are going to be uh, during the vaccination and uh, we will see the what is the what are the what is the sequence for this breakthrough infections and we will also do the sequencing of the sewage samples to understand the surveillance so beyond sars coronavirus 2 we are not only focused on sars coronavirus 2 we are also working on other viruses as uh, dr abhishek has already told to you so that is the rationale of this viral research laboratory and uh, this is the um, our crf form that is a common reference form for the clinical reference form and it has been made on the basis of the clinical syndromic approach diarrhea respiratory fever unknown so all these parameters has to be filled up because uh, we are a part of nie that is national institute of uh, epidemiology we are uh, every day uh, our data is going for a nie portal whether it is a positive or negative so we request whoever is sending the samples because they are all free of cost testing so they should fill up this crf form and if you find any outbreak means if you suspect same kind of uh, uh, symptoms or same kind of signs from a, from a from a patient then you can always fill up this the second form this is an outbreak form which will be supplied once you give a call to the vrdl so as i told to you there are two uh, things even in uh, an, uh, other than sars coronavirus 2 which we are doing that is elisa that is for serological test and molecular test pcr rt pcr and also for sequencing so coming to the um, serological test which we are doing uh, for um, syndromic approach that is hepatitis panel we have hav hepatitis a virus hepatitis b as well as hepatitis c that is for igg and also for hepatitis c which we are doing regularly and we are also uh, we are also sending our mts to the uh, community centers where phcs they are also we are also collecting these samples and uh, systemic febrile illness we have dengue chikungunya cytomegalovirus and also ebv for serological testing for ns1 for dengue and igm and igg for uh, other um, parameters so encephalitis panel we have je japanese encephalitis igm and west nile fever for uh, igm and hsv1 and hsv2 and varicella zoster for igm and igg so exanthemus fevers we have varicella zoster measles mumps and rubella both igm and igg are available so gastroenteritis panel we have rotavirus presently so where we can detect the antigen so for these samples we need uh, the serum or the plasma and mostly we have the qualitative elisa testing for this serology so coming to the molecular testing we have hepatitis panel that is we uh, recently we have started in the uh, this year so uh, we have a, we can detect the viral load hbv and as well as a scv viral load can be detected in systemic febrile panel we have the dengue serotyping we can able to detect all the four serotypes of the dengue and also the chikungunya can also be detected by real time pcr and uh, we have a uh, network laboratory of zika uh, which we have started in this year only uh, um, dhr has given us the zika surveillance center uh, for this uh, uh, rajasthan 
and we have also cytomegalovirus we can quantitate the pcr that is a quantitative pcr for uh, cytomegalovirus both for the neonates as well as the immunocompromised individuals and uh, exanthemous fevers we have the rubella virus and in case of other we have the influenza network laboratory which is uh, our laboratory is influenza network laboratory for the both the swine flu as well as the bird flu so coming to the uh, uh, dengue outbreak which has happened during the second wave and the third wave which we have seen the, uh, um, the enormous number of samples that is 7106 uh, 7106 samples were received and out of which we have received uh, the positivity is 1008 so if you see the ch um, chikungunya in that period only the same vector can transmit the chikungunya also the total number of samples 32 suspected samples and we have received the five positive uh, positive over chikungunya so uh, zika the, in that time uh, dhr has given us a, a call saying that we have to make uh, the surveillance for the zika so since an outbreak has happened in the jaipur and uh, around 1500 uh, 1500 positive cases were reported from jaipur so soon we have started uh, making the surveillance for the zika which are dengue negative and chikungunya negative samples were screened 170 samples were screened and out of which one positive sample we have we could able to trace which is zika positive and we communicated to the niv pune and we have sequenced this sample for a zika outbreak so the uh, mono infection in case of dengue we have seen that dengue serotype 2 is more prevalent in this area that is 92.9 percent of the cases Whereas the co-infection was observed where the co-infection with the uh, all the serotypes of the dengue most that is 1, 2 and 3 are, uh, are also found and the dengue 1 and 4 the most commonest co-infections in the uh, dengue serotypes. So coming to the influenza, we have influenza testing. Uh, this influenza testing can able to detect the influenza uh, uh, this is the bird flu and swine flu and also can be able to detect uh, that is the H5N8 that is a recent outbreak which happened in Rajasthan. So the endemic strains that is the Amagata and Victoria can also be detected in this influenza um, kit. So we could able to trace out that is 98 samples which were referred from across Rajasthan were able to test it none, but none came positive and we have also tested for veterinarian 10 veterinarians which have sent their samples for H5N8. So coming to the recent ones, that is a blood-borne diseases, we have a panel of HBV, HCV, HIV viral load. We are regularly testing this HIV, HBV, HCV in our serology for a serological diagnosis. Every day we are receiving in AIMS itself, we are receiving 100 samples for each. So we have started this viral load at RVRDL. So we are doing this and uh, I would like to request the clinicians please send the uh, at least 10 ml of the blood sample. That is, uh, we need at least 2 ml of plasma for doing this. Uh, viral load testing so the other viruses they are going to be rubella we have a congenital rubella syndrome project with dr kuldeep and we have done we have done the serological uh, uh, testing that is 441 serological testing out of which 50 positive for serology and we have done the pcr testing and 100 po uh, 15 positive by pcr and we have cytomegalovirus infection uh, project also we have the serology we have 35 positive and out of which pcr was positive by 15. so human papilloma virus this is the pilot project which we have started during the uh, 2019 and 21 and we could be able to enroll for 92 patients and uh, the most prevalent uh, zero, uh, genotype which we have seen is hpv 16 and our real-time pcr can able to detect the 14 high risk genotypes of hpv so these are the different uh, um, tests and uh, these are the different targets which we can use and these are the different samples which we can do in our real time PCR. Coming to the future prospects, we would like to apply this surveillance network because uh, DHR has given us the, the surveillance network for this influenza and Zika and also for the bird flu. We will be applying for this and the viral sequencing will be done for SARS coronavirus 2 to understand uh, the new variants which are uh, continuously emerging and also for dengue, dengue sequencing and also for the influenza sequencing. Uh, we we are just starting the one health project uh, soon we will be applying this ngs for the human uh, human as well as the host vector uh, infections so coming to the bsl3 the bsl3 setup has has been already started and uh, we can apply for the cell culture which we have ordered already so this is for virus identification and also for the cytopathic effects will be measured and cell viral assays 
and virus purification virus characterization will also be done and also the virus quantification assays will be performed and for the uh, influenza and uh, cchf we will be certainly doing the cell culture cell culture and the flavi viruses like dengue we will be doing the prnt that is a plaque reduction neutralization test which is the gold standard for this dengue so other uh, viruses which can be cultured in bsl3 that is going to be like uh, arbo other arbo viruses je west nile viruses jaikunguniya and rabies and nifa chandipura hiv zika and cchf can be cultured and bsl2 viruses can also be cultured in bsl3 i would here i would like to thank uh, our funding agencies that is world health organization and nih and uh, icmr and dhr and i would like also like to thank our aims admin, administrative team and uh, department of microbiology all faculty and the staff and uh, we have 13 staff in our uh, regional vrdl three are scientists and four are technicians and six are mts thank you thanks all excellent ravishekar uh, good facilities you have developed and definitely this will help all the patients and particularly department of medicine because most of the cases are first contact is usually department of medicine with hiv hpv scv infections dengue fever everything is coming and definitely it will give us insight Uh, into the various unknown because sometimes we are handicapped we have culture is negative procalcitonin is negative collectomen is negative everything comes negative so uh, we have the many cases of the lung infection and also the uh, associated uh, meningitis like picture so uh, many times we have sent uh, samples to the niv pune so what is your plan that known viruses suspected you culture it but what about unknown because that's where we are interested ki we have seen many cases of uh, succumbing to the illness where they have the systemic manifestations like liver lung kidney and brain involvement and we are not able to reach any microbiological diagnosis so what's your comment sir for the unknown viruses what we can do is uh, according to the uh, signs and symptoms we can plan accordingly and we will start screening them in a syndromic approach and uh, once we could not able to find out anything uh, we can uh, able to uh, do the pcr that is uh, uh, for unknown sequence also we can able to do the pcr and we can send it for sequencing we can do the sequencing in our facility itself so that we can find out which how they are uh, related to the known viruses this is a common approach for all kinds of new viruses which are going to be originated thanks uh, dr gadpali for the enlightening presentation uh, i have a very basic question uh, for the molecular diagnosis of viral diseases cbnet or rt pcr what do you prefer what the similarity what the difference what the logistic what the cost cbnet is basically it is a instrument which has been started for the tb diagnosis and during the code and covid pandemic it has since the cbnet instrument is all over there in uh, across india so uh, government has given the approval for the testing of the covid 19 for the cbnet so i would i would suggest that it is better if you can do the real time pcr rather than this cb net because cb net is having its own uh, burden if once the tb uh, testing has started so during the pandemic yes we don't have the real time pcr machines enough so we have given uh, most of the laboratories have started on the cb net itself well presentation sir uh, as we know uh, our lab is full of uh, seasonal viruses and the pandemic viruses also blood borne viruses but being from a nephrology specialist uh, we uh, are very concerned about the bk virus 
because this virus is uh, very important in the management especially immediately after the post transplant and even in the follow up of the patient so when we are going to start on a regular basis bk virus <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, and thanks for the question, sir. Uh, actually, we have received the number of samples from nephrology for BK virus and we have sent some of them for uh, NIV Pune as well as the um, as, uh, uh, SGPGA Lucknow, few samples. So, soon we are going to, uh, we are in the process of standardization of this BK virus as well as JC virus for the uh, transplant and uh, uh, we have started the cytomegalovirus infection that is a quantity 2 PCR which presently we have soon by uh, this mid of this month only we could able to start this BK virus and JC virus. Uh, Dr. Ravi, uh, thank you for a very nice presentation and since our institute is also a part of the One Health Consortium and uh, there is an interaction between the uh, various host and the virus whether it is a animal or the human so uh, when the dengue is occurring for so long in uh, Jodhpur uh, every alternate years there is a heavy uh, and epidemics of the dengue so uh, have we done any analysis of the host factor also for different viruses and different diseases yes sir what is the plan yes sir uh, we have done a kind of five year study uh, for dengue and uh, we published in JMV uh, the Journal of Medical Virology uh, we have seen the co-infections are very common in uh, uh, in this place and we have a kind of collaboration with the NCBS Pune. Dr. Sudhir Krishna is the one who has developed a vaccine which we are also collaborators in that project and uh, he has developed a DNA, uh, dengue DNA vaccine which we published in molecular therapy and uh, ICMR uh, Dr. Balram Bhargava has endorsed our uh, vaccine strategy also. So that vaccine is uh, developed on the basis of the uh, viruses that are co-infections which are primarily in this area and also in the Jodhpur and also the northern India we have taken from Ames, Ames Delhi and uh, from Mumbai we have uh, um, Tata, Memorial, uh, Tata Memorial Centers and we have uh, uh, SN Medi uh, sorry, uh, St. John's in from Bangalore where we have collected the samples. So, basing on this profile only, we could have developed this vaccine and this vaccine is for the um, uh, DNA vaccine is only for the dengue serotype 2 and 3, which is more prevalent in our area. So, it is again on the factors of the host. That is, uh, we are doing the clinical trials in uh, Africa. This is an Indo-African collaborative project and we are doing the clinical trials in Africa about this vaccine and we are finding a good results for this clinical trials. Thank you Dr. Ravi. Uh, thank you for briefing regarding the vital panels that are available. Uh, any clinicians will be an, uh, as, as an intensivist, uh, we will be uh, like to know how much time is required between receiving the sample for various serology and for microbiology, uh, molecular biology samples. How much? It means, uh, I, I, I think it is a turnaround time you want to ask. Yeah, I want to. Uh, for turnaround time for, um, uh, for COVID, for presently for the COVID it is 8 hours. For the influenza, it is again uh, the main uh, system where we we could not tell you the turnaround time is the number of samples, if I have to say specifically. Because in ELISA, if we have to start the ELISA, then we need the minimum number of samples. That is, it is a 96 well plate and uh, we can do only 85 tests. 85 test samples can be done and it, can, it has to be repeated uh, at least three times or four times because we never get enough number of samples so we have to wait to make them uh, at that lot we have to make it uh, the positive samples uh, the positive controls are going to be very limited for a plate you can repeat only for three times so that is the reason we always wait for the other samples to get into that plate so that is the reason we cannot say the, the exact turnaround time but I can, I can tell you at least one day if you give me one day for ELISA we can definitely we can give you the result for any kind of ELISA. For influenza virus, we can, we have to wait for two days because we don't have the enough number of samples for influenza testing by real-time PCR. So if we have enough number of samples, we can do immediately on the day itself. Uh, 